Hey, what's up, Lightball Show here. Today we are going to discuss season one of Nickelodeon's original show, Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, season one is referenced as books. Each season is referenced as books. So book one is water. Um, you ha This came out in 2005. This spurred a sequel TV series, Avatar The Legend of Korra. This spurred a 2010 live action movie, which we don't speak about. We don't talk about Bruno when it comes to that movie. And uh, there's going to be a live action TV series on Netflix, which we're all very worried about because the original creators of the show left the show, uh, because left the live action show because of created differences. So I'm very nervous. I'm hope hopefully optimistic, but I'm very nervous. Then there's also the Smash um, comic book series. We see that to my right, your left. Well, you see parts of it mixed in with some Stranger Things comics. There's two uh, graphic novels in regards to Avatar, Avatar Kyoshi. There's a, it's just, it's, it's a worldwide phenomenon since 2005. So, who is Aang? Why is he the last airbender? Aang is a 12-year-old airbender. He's the last of his kind. There's been a hundred-year war. The Fire Nation has declared that they are the greatest nation and they need to share their greatness with the entire world, right? Fire, air, water, earth. Um, those are the, the four nations, um, Fire, air, water, earth. There's the four symbols. The cycle of the avatar, fire, air, water, earth. The first avatar was a firebender. We meet him later on within the Legend of Korra in flashbacks. So, Aang is with his flying bison, Appa, and they are trapped in an iceberg. Katara and Sokka are two southern water tribe members. They find him in the, in the iceberg, right? Aang magically falls in love with Katara the moment he sees her. The boy in the iceberg. That's the name of the first episode. Um... Zuko is a prince of the Fire Nation. Zuko's father, Ozai, is the Fire Lord, Fire Lord Ozai, and he is ruling the Fire Nation to make sure the whole world knows of the Fire Nation's greatness. There's been constant wars. It's a hundred year war. There's been constant battles. Katara and Sokka's mom died from the Fire Nation. You know, their dad um, is all fighting the Fire Nation. And so it's a matter of what are they doing with this kid now um, who has to learn the four elements to become a true the true master avatar that he's destined to be the bridge between the spirit world and the human world so zuko and his and his uh uncle iro general iro are on a quest to find the avatar zuko needs to find the avatar in order to restore his honor because his honor was lost because he dared to challenge his father by saying you know he shouldn't sacrifice men all of these things right zuko wants back zuko's 16 ang's 12 katara's 13 sokka's 15 something like that the third episode we meet suki and the kyoshi warriors on kyoshi island i completely forgot all about that but we did it happened and it's awesome because suki and the kyoshi warriors are massive parts of book two and three moving forward um but it's cool seeing that originally i didn't pick up on that we see azula uh, princess azula zuko's sister as a flashback but then also in the very last scene she just smirks at her father who's giving him who's giving her the command to you know do what his son could not capture the avatar in the process of zuko trying to capture the avatar throughout the you know 20 something episode season um general zhao who's promoted to admiral zhao of the fire nation is also in the in quest of a defeating zuko but b capturing the avatar as well so the clan the uh, team avatar are going from it's just the three of them at this point um saka katara well technically momo as well ang momo the flying lemur monkey, and then by, uh, Appa, the flying bison. They go to the southern water temp, uh, southern air temple. They go to the northern air temple. There's uh, many cast of characters throughout. There's side stories. There's side missions throughout. But then it's eventually getting to the northern water tribe where the big battle between Fire Nation ships and, you know, the Avatar happens in order to protect the moon spirit, um, who then Princess Yue becomes the moon spirit and... We know that as a as a joke from season three of uh, Sokka and Zuko having a moment, and uh, Sokka says, "You know, my girlfriend turned into the into the moon," and Zuko goes, "That's rough, buddy." We we know and love that meme for years, but we don't see that till two seasons later. But this is what started it: Sokka, you know, trying to be in a relationship with this with this princess of the Northern Water Tribe, um, who then has to sacrifice herself in order to save the Moon Spirit. Very heroic throughout all accounts. Um, 
aside from the heroism, it's this the fun stuff, you know, going to the festivals, going to the different towns, meeting the different people, you know, flirting with this person, learning this style of bending, learning that style of fighting. Sokka is mastering all different uh, non-bending fighting styles along the way as well. But we meet Jet. There's a whole episode dedicated to Jet and Pipsqueak and the Duke. Um, we get Haru. We see him later on. Uh, there's also Teo. Um, his dad is running the Northern Air Temple within his, you know, inventions and flying machines and stuff like that, which is, again, a big turning point within Fire Nation machinery moving forward. So this is a great, great story. And not many people know this, but Dave Filoni, who we now know and love for The Mandalorian, he did Star Wars The Clone Wars, directed a lot of these episodes. Not many people know that. And this season, this series as a whole on IMDb has a 9.3 out of 10 unheard of especially for a cartoon so it's a coherent you have to watch episode after episode to understand the story it's not a it's not a cartoon where you can just jump on like spongebob and just you know pick up and laugh for 11 minutes and then that's it and on to the next one no this is scripted this is a scripted story that's why star wars clone wars was so successful because of a scripted story from dave filoni that's why star wars rebels was so great scripted story from dave filoni so um it's very interesting watching the history of certain people being so affluistic to uh, pop culture and storytelling. Um, Lin-Manuel Miranda is just everywhere right now because of Encanto, but he's been everywhere for a long, long time because of Broadway. So having that transition within different music and storytelling is appropriate, especially now in a Disney sense. So what's Dave Filoni going to do next? I don't know. Now, um... I, ha I don't have many Avatar things, to be completely honest. There's an Avatar box from Culture Fly, which comes every three months, roughly, which is pretty cool. We've got cool stuff in there. I got a hoodie. I got a I got an Avatar Aang hoodie, uh, which is pretty neat. I wore that in a recent review. Um, I should have worn it for this, but I was like, you know what? Let me show off my tattoos, because I actually have these tattoos. Very few people have these tattoos. Those of us who have these tattoos, when we find each other in real life, it's so cool when you're like, oh my god, and you just show each other your tattoos, and it's pretty awesome, so... We're awesome. We know it. Um, yeah. Book one down. Two more books for The Last Airbender. Four books for Legend of Korra. I got some comics that I have to reread because we actually didn't review certain comics. And uh, we're getting our Avatar playlist accumulation of reviews together. I want to make sure I do everything that I'm supposed to do. I'm very, very... I'm debating to watch the 2010 movie again. Um, I don't want to buy it, and you can't watch it on any streaming site, so don't know when that's happening, but before I die, before I die, very many, many decades from now, many centuries from now, many centuries from now, <laughs> that's all I got. Mucho mahalo.